Welcome back to DarkScript and thank you for joining again. Today's presentation will be about read-only memory, or in short, ROM. ROM is basically just another type of storage, but only for read operations, meaning the data can only be read from the ROM, but not written. ROM normally comes as a chip on the motherboard and contains the computer's firmware, or BIOS. We'll cover the BIOS topic in details later on. For now, let's try to understand the general definition of ROM, or read-only memory. So, what is ROM? ROM is a non-volatile type of memory, which can only be read, and either hardly or never be modified after the device has been manufactured. ROM is mainly used for firmware or BIOS, which will be discussed later in this module. Different types of ROM are available in the market, such as PROM, EPROM, double EP ROM, and some flash devices. However, regardless of their differences, they all have two things in common. They are non-volatile, and their content is either unchangeable or extremely hard to modify. The reason behind this is that the ROM is an integrated circuit which is programmed and burned on a chip when it is manufactured, therefore it is very hard to modify. ROM chips are used not only in computers, but in other electronic devices as well, such as toys, coffee machines, video games, consoles, and so on. And they contain all the configuration of the basic input and output functionalities of that device. Another example of ROM is the old CD-ROM disk, which was introduced as a read-only media before the introduction of the rewritable CDs. If you're not that new to computers, you might have heard about the term firmware before. The definition of firmware is a permanent software that is programmed into a read-only memory device. This type of software provides low-level control and basic input and output functionalities of electronic devices. For non-complex devices, the firmware may sometimes serve as the entire operating system. However, most modern devices would contain the firmware as a separate component, functioning on a lower layer closer to the physical one. Although it used to be less common in the past, many devices do support firmware upgrades or write operations nowadays. Common reasons for updating the firmware include fixing bugs or adding new input and output features to the device. Firmware, just like drivers, has a similar functionality but differs in the way it is stored on the hardware itself, while drivers are installed on the operating system. The firmware can start on its own and do what it's programmed to do, while drivers, on the other hand, must be run by the operating system. On the right, you can see an example of a fairly old type of firmware called BIOS. BIOS stands for Basic Input and Output System. The BIOS is the first component that kicks in when a machine is turned on and before the operating system is loaded into the memory. The BIOS has a list of configurable settings associated with some low-level hardware functionalities, such as the general system health, the boot order, the system time, security features, and a couple of more advanced settings. The BIOS is primarily responsible for handling the device's hardware components and ensure that they function properly, using a 16-bit code and a very basic graphical user interface. BIOS has evolved into newer firmware types, and the most popular one for home PCs is EFI or UEFI. EFI or UEFI stand for Unified Extensible Firmware Interface and serves the same purpose as the old BIOS. However, it has a more modern graphical interface and additional functionalities, which make it the new generation standard for system firmware on modern devices. Its advantages over BIOS are mainly security-related features, such as the Secure Boot option, which validates the authenticity of an operating system and makes sure it's not corrupted by malware, it enables users to manage more than 2 terabytes of storage, which was not possible using the old BIOS, and makes the booting process faster and smoother. It has built-in networking functionalities, which allow configuring and troubleshooting the firmware remotely, and supports PXE, or Netboot, and its own shell environment. On the right, you can see an example of the ASUS EFI interface version. And here you can see an example of a UEFI interface. The last component is the CMOS. This component is not a type of ROM, but it retains the configuration of the ROM or the BIOS. 
This is why I'm making an exception and including it in our read-only memory presentation. So what is the CMOS? The CMOS, or Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor, is a chip on the motherboard which stores information such as the BIOS configuration, the system date and time, the boot sequence, and the type of hardware installed. CMOS is powered by a lithium-ion battery, or the CMOS battery, so the information is kept intact even during a power loss. The CMOS battery can hold a charge for up to 10 years and even in case of failure, it will simply reset the BIOS to its default settings, but it wouldn't impact your data in any way. In case you ever wondered, this is how your operating system keeps the correct date and time after you shut down your PC. When you make changes to the BIOS configuration, the settings are not stored locally on the BIOS chip itself, but on the CMOS chip, which like many RAM chips is manufactured according to the CMOS process. Most computers have the CMOS integrated with their RTC or real-time clock component on the south bridge.